Hello. Thank you for tuning back in to the Rachel's Records meme page podcast. This is my uh, third time trying to do this intro. It's a little funny, but, you know, a little depressing. It's all good. Um, also, yeah, just haven't been on here in a while, so trying to shake off the rust of talking into a microphone, not slamming a stick into a microphone. So um, today I'm putting out a podcast that is from a few days ago. Um, I got to talk with David and Garrett of Lilith. Uh, David plays in a few other bands. Jo- uh, David. Um, <laughs> Garrett used to play in a few other bands back in the biz A. Got a few other members in the band that weren't present. You got Sawyer. Uh, homie's favorite band was Beartooth. My favorite band is Beartooth. And that's super sick. And then uh, Justin on the other side. Justin from Prestige. TBH, I didn't live in Washington when that band was around, so I don't get the joke, but everyone says it, so I'll be a part of it. <laughs> and then Asa, who is a fucking mixing genius because he fucking did the album that we are going to be talking about in the beginning of these podcasts about from the Lilith. Um, so yeah, uh, I did it on Zoom, and I've never had this happen before, but like halfway through, it was like, all right, you're running out of time. And then like it was at the 40 minute mark or whatever it ended it so we had a little bit of a commercial break uh and then after that we did another one where we took another 40 40 minutes so at least it's long but we kind of just shit talk so um yeah that's pretty cool i don't know why but the first half the camera isn't on me like i did the same thing that is on part two but whatever Hey man, just fucking listen or watch it. Go buy GMO merch that's left over from the tour. Go buy Lilith merch that's probably on their band camp. Or just DM them and say, hey motherfucker. Other than that, have fun. The music's probably rolling in by this time. So realistically, I can say whatever I want. Follow Lupino. Um, maybe should. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Am I gonna look at Austin Carlisle this entire time? Yes. Okay. It's attack, attack, bro. I just had, I just had to mentally prepare for that. I could put a heart over his face. <laughs> <laughs> How are y'all doing? Weird... Uh, great. How are you? I'm good. Just hanging out. Roast Austin Carlisle for me. Got a weird nose. Yeah, in the hair. I'm glad he. (laughs) So there's that. Jesus. Hell yeah. He's also only ever been on one good album. So there's that. Yeah, it's called The Depths. No, it's the self titled. (laughs) It's the Flood. It's the Flood. It's not the Flood. The Depths is the song from the issue. (laughs) Yeah, I I would say The Amice Moment was sick. I liked it. I got to meet them at like a table signing. Other than that, I was like, okay, after your first album, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need anything else. <laughs> oh, dude, album, album two. Album two's good. But the one with the flood on it? Yeah, uh, well, that's an the EP. flood was the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they released an EP. They did a deluxe edition with four extra songs. That's what it was. Here are heavy ones that we saved. <laughs> Yeah, they were very like slip naughty on that. I I don't know. I don't know how yeah. I feel about that one. For real. Because I. But now the bass player sings, which is weird. Yeah, their new bass player. Yeah. It's like he's doing all the vocals, and he was like not in the band for any of those songs. But I guess they have more albums out with him than without him now. So. Yeah. Better than Norma Jean touring on, like ten year albums with none of the members that were on the album. <laughs> <laughs> are they really that far removed from their original lineup i didn't so realize that they went through a lot of singers and then originally their original guitar player was chris and then he left like i forget what album it was he left right before they went into the studio so now there's like no actual original members huh damn it's a fun, it's a fun cover band yeah <laughs> oh well at furnace fest this year 68 is playing so i have a funny feeling i'm gonna see memphis get played with josh scoggin that'd be pretty cool yeah yeah 
as long as they play the old shit, I'm cool with that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the quick thing. Is there anything that y'all don't want in to talk about, or that you specifically would want talked about, like promotion wise or whatever, just so that I can keep in mind of it? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, cool. I just, you yeah. know, I don't want to bring up. So what's up with that foot fetish thing? And then you guys be like, oh, fuck. No. Dude, now you got me like digging into my brain for my deepest, darkest secrets. I'm like, but how the fuck do you know them? So why am I concerned? <laughs> right. Did I, did I tell you about the gathering? No. All right. Well, don't worry about it then. Okay. So I'm, <laughs> I'm down with that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's cool. secret. No. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Is your, is your. Is your podcast video or is it just audio? Um, so I'm trying to transition to video now. The first one I did was with uh, Kaizo. Okay. So I think that's going to be a regular thing. So would you prefer okay. not video or? No, I, I, I don't care. I was just. I mean, I'm like, I look like shit, but it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> same. Hey, yeah. you got it, it's all about that bad bitch energy. You know what I mean? So we got. Looks like we got some decent lighting up in here, though. Yeah. I mean, it looks Ooh. fine on my end. Okay, sick. Cool, good. I'll, I'll just put, like, super contrast on it and just really bring out the shadows. It looks sick. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. I'm trying to... I, you know what? I'll just figure this out on the fly. It's fine. You'll be fine. Mm. I, I, warned, I warned David about his top five favorite bands now he's now he's concerned <laughs> i also was gonna be like if you just have like a that like top band that you go to it like there no needs to be a top tier or whatever then i just want you to give me the best and the worst of your favorite band like Word. if it's i have yeah. a def I have a definitive list. I've been tracking this shit since I was like twelve. So oh hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of I'm one of those people. You know, I love it. <laughs> And I, I like listening to band discographies just straight through, like just spending a day, yeah. day on it. It's pretty fun. So, okay. So welcome back to the Rachel's Records meme page podcast. How are y'all doing? Got to wait for the response. Um, today we have Lilith, which is fucking sick. This has been my favorite band since their first show and they blew me the fuck away. So would y'all like to introduce yourselves real quick? Yeah. yeah. You first. What's up? I'm David. I play the drums. I'm Garrett. I'm the vocalist. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, y'all started like right out of did you begin in COVID or was there anything before? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> technically this has kind of existed in some capacity for like five years. Mm -hmm. Um maybe even more if you wanna consider like very technically <laughs> uh when did we decide on a name we could call that our starting point yeah i think it was probably maybe a year before covid that that we decided that the band needed a, a different name it was originally going to be a continuation of my old band and then member swaps happened enough that it was it was different it was all different people other than me and a totally different sound and it had been long enough so probably about a year before covid is when we decided we we're gonna have a new name and start start from scratch so okay hell yeah yeah so is it like a concept or is it just the first time when you kind of just talked about specific things and then once you go on to other things or is there a specific concept behind the band like uh no there, there no that's okay that's yeah no it wasn't like uh it wasn't like conceptually like over the whole the whole band like the album definitely is like conceptual and it's mm -hmm. in its own right but but the band doesn't have like some bigger like concept pushing it forward or anything like that okay cool that's fucking sick um so with like the past members has there been any previously in Lilith that were um like other than Justin and Sawyer because I know you had a member that previously passed um and obviously I if that is touchy I don't want to go any further with that but um how many members you, you, you can you can talk about that that's that's okay. fine but um 
As aside from Greg's death, the five people that are in Lilith now are the five people who have been in Lilith. Okay. Mm. Hell yeah. Cool. I, I guess we we had a we had a guitar player who was who was around for a decent amount of time that it didn't mm -hmm. work out with, but that was like prior to recording. Like I mean recording was all me, Garrett and Greg. And Asa, our current bass player, actually produced, engineered the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So like those four people were like involved from the get go. Also Justin had a hand in writing a handful of the stuff. So Okay. Did you guys despite Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, no, despite us going through like two years of trying to find a fucking lineup, uh <laughs> it is surprisingly a, a small number of people who have been like core involved <laughs> honestly that's sick though i i love when it works out that way um where did you record it or did you do it uh, like home recording and then he produced it at home pretty much all right here that's the yeah. good amount was in this room drums we did it uh the performing arts center that he works at on like a huge stage so sick. two of our music videos were filmed there so if you look at our video for part two and our video for uh, Begotten, mm -hmm. both of them were filmed on the stage where David tracked the drums for the record. That's sick. It's a full circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, all of the all of the guitar and vocals were done in this house. We did uh, we did the guitar like reamped in my closet, mm -hmm. like recorded it DI and then just reamped it a bunch. Same with bass. So that's sick. That's really cool. Yeah. And does he uh, work at a studio or do, does anything, or is he just like aspiring DIY? Engineer? Yeah. So Ace says the he's like the in house sound guy for a like school district performing arts center. So he runs like mm -hmm. live sound for a lot of like school band performance type stuff. But he's he's done a handful of of recording. Also, he did both of the two previous torn releases the current one and the last one mm -hmm. uh he did what well, he did some after the fallout stuff right yeah he did a song for after the fallout he did um a band from here called sinners and saviors that was kind of short-lived he he's like really choosy on who he works with mm -hmm. so it's not like something he's trying to do like all the time you know yeah, but I he likes you. doing it mm -hmm. yeah so the the torn record the torn record and the Lilith record, like I worked on with him in a lot of detail, mostly like he did, did all the technical stuff and I like work in like the creative, like post-production space, mm -hmm. but I was in the room for like 90% of the mixing that went on with the, the newest torn release that he did. That's pretty cool. It sounds sick. And even with the Lilith record, like it sounds like it was from like a high class studio, just, and not even say anything on that, but it's like his mix is just so goddamn good on that to where you picture it being in a full studio you know good <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he went to music school and shit yeah, yeah he's he's sick. fucking good he's really fucking good mm -hmm. yeah like when we were at the vfw show and you were trying to figure out the whole pedal thing and he was talking about it i was like holy shit you should just be doing sound for this like i, I <laughs> you, you know a lot more than me <laughs> so yeah Shout out Isa. He's he's hella cool. Um but yeah, like I got to meet you guys formally on the uh Kaizo Lilith run that we did with Isa Luna. Um and then but before that the VFW show was y'all's first show. Um did you have any attempts at doing shows before the pandemic or did again it just start through the pandemic? Nah, we were supposed to we had a we had a gig lined up. For like end of uh 2021 what was that supposed to be like october? it was supposed to be october yeah mm -hmm. uh and that just fell through um for dumb reasons but we don't have to get into that <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah otherwise now we were nowhere close to show ready pre-pandemic yeah like yeah. when when the record got finished it got finished in march of 2020 mm -hmm. and like so Asa mixed everything, but a guy named Aaron Lanfer, who works at Decade Sound in Tacoma, and he mm -hmm. does sound live sound for real art, um, he mastered the record. And so me and Asa went down to Tacoma and worked with Aaron at the mastering session. And like the next day, the stay at home order for the pandemic got announced. 
like literally the day after we finished the <laughs> mm-hmm. so, but at that point at that point in time Lilith was still just me David and Greg so like like David said we weren't anywhere close to show ready anyway so mm-hmm. damn but yeah I mean y'all and then fucking... we were like well I guess we'll have to wait till fall <laughs> to play shows <laughs> and it was like years later <laughs> yeah it's like i'll just wait till next time i swear <laughs> yeah so but i'm glad we're kind of hitting the road running y'all got to show up on the first and i'm really excited to be at that one and see it um did you guys book that yourselves or is that just kind of like something that happened no uh the touring bands management reached out to us asked if we wanted to do the thing with them so I really like helping touring bands out. Yeah. So is that yeah. the one opening and then in the middle? Um, Marked Life and Sorry No Sympathy are the bands on the road. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then, guess... So Nova Fracture is opening their local. Mm-hmm. Kaizo is in the middle, I think. Obviously, they're local. Mm-hmm. So they're doing it right, honestly. They're, they're, they're sticking to two touring bands. Like in the middle. In slots two and four out of five. So people like have to watch that. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to book touring gigs, though. If you're like kind yeah. of like kind of on that small stream. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, those those bands are on the same agency as uh, No Home, the band that headlined that VFW show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so. Cool. Yeah, I'm assuming they heard about us through No Home and asked us if we would play. How about the Dreamer agency? Yeah. 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 Um. So that's pretty cool. Um, David, you just played at Chop Suey. How'd that go? Dude, that was a blast. We opened mm-hmm. for a place to bury strangers, which um, I wasn't super familiar with, but I guess they're kind of like a very like kind of like legendary cult following noise rock band. They had like the reputation as like the loudest band in New York. And honestly, after that gig, I believe it because oh okay. Dude, they had an amp set up. I don't know if you're familiar with Pound. Mm-hmm. Um, we played with them in Olympia. Right. Okay, yeah. So yeah. they've got that like crazy wall of cabs. Yeah. They had a they had a rig like that, um, which was sick, amongst amongst other crazy things. And like their uh, kind of like main songwriter dude. God, I can't remember his name. I feel like a jerk. Um, but he's like a he owns a pedal company and everything. He's like a big guitar whiz. Um, I don't know. They're they're super cool people to hang out with mm-hmm. and to play with. And the crowd was good. I don't know. I was shocked there were that many people there on a Sunday night. Um, yeah, love that venue. Love the bands we played with. Glove was the other band. They were a cool like synth pop thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Cool. So that was your band, Monster Watch. Was it just a three yeah. band bill? yeah that's cool yeah glove glove and place of very strangers were on the road we were the we were the local slot we actually we had played a show for monster watch had played a show with the rhythm section of a place to very strangers they used to or they might still do um a band called ceremony mm-hmm. which people might be like ceremony that's tight did they play cursed uh other ceremony (laughs) which is still tight they're super nice people but i remember actually that was one of the first times i ever talked to john from monster watch i was like i was still just a fan back then but he posted like yo we're playing a ceremony and i messaged him and was like holy shit that's so cool i love that band like that's awesome and he thought it was the california ceremony at the time as well and he was like hell yeah dude i'm so stoked like rotor park that's a great record for me and then the gig rolls around and that band rolls in and it's like oh this is not the same oh my god <laughs> but they were still cool and they made friends with them and then they had us on their gig now that they're playing in this other band so it all worked out that's funny so they're the same band but they just two are two different kind of uh yeah the so the ceremony i think ceremony east coast that's their handle um i think they were a two-piece and they became the drummer and the bass player for a place to bury strangers oh that's cool anyway sorry i don't want to waste much time on this oh yeah random bands i just <laughs> i was just i was just thinking like code orange used to do that too in like a weird like 
soft rock band like they would oh adventures yeah, yeah. adventures that, yeah. I always, that record's great yeah for real and like i always like when bands do that they're like let's have this and then let's have this you know what i mean mm-hmm. so shout out that shit um are there any plans for recording in the future or is it just shows oh yeah dude we we're trying to do we we're trying to have a couple new songs out sometime in the summer maybe i think that's probably gonna look more like fall at this point <laughs> yeah okay. things got really busy really fast we've been putting a lot of energy into playing shows like before before we really started playing shows we were like hot to trot on getting some new songs out but then like the shows just started coming <laughs> and, they, and they didn't stop coming so like the yeah the the time has been dedicated to that though which yeah reception has been really good for all the times we played live now too I, I had honestly been kind of scared about like i don't know i mean we did not we did not blow up and become like the internet's favorite new band <laughs> with the release of post because you know that happens to one in a million or whatever yeah but uh i had just been like oh my god i feel like we need new material because like this just has not popped off for whatever reason but now that we're out playing live um i don't know i've noticed like numbers have bumped on our existing stuff so i'm not i don't i don't feel as like as freaked out about needing new material online since things have gone so well in the live space personally yeah. i'm i'm honestly feeling the same way because like we put out the record during covid which like if i could rewind like we wouldn't have done that i didn't realize it would be st- you know, so long between when the record came out and when shows would start again. And if I had hindsight of that, I would have never even put it out because it was like, it got lost in the ether. Like everything that came out in the pandemic felt like it did that with the rare exception. So Mm -hmm. um, we were all really, really nervous about that when we started playing. Cause for us, it was like, Oh, we're going to start playing live and we're going to play, be playing songs that we released a year ago, recorded almost two years ago, and some of them were written almost fucking five years ago. So, or I guess at this point, over five years ago. So it, it was just, it was kind of shitty feeling. But now that we're out there doing it, like it, it's seeming like people enjoy them, which is really uh, um, positive. Yeah. And I love all the samples y'all keep in the live show. Like I just I love samples and bands that just little things that pop up. So dude, I'm like old school metalcore dude. That's that's like my thing. Mm-hmm. And when bands used to fucking put movie quotes in the middle of every fucking track, <laughs> like 18 visions, obviously. I love that shit. I live yeah. for that. So yeah, I've I've had a lot of fun. I've kind of like done all of the audio stuff for all of our silly little like mid-song live samples and stuff and like Mm -hmm. i don't even know i had never i had never thrown reverb on a bus before (laughs) and all of a sudden i'm like i'm like side chaining shit and like and like putting delays on fucking yoshi story quotes and (laughs) what's funny about silly silly things (laughs) Yeah, you'll you'll watch movies and be like, oh, I could fucking sample that, and you start voice memoing it. It's like playing <laughs> yeah. a video game, same thing. <laughs> so, oh uh, yeah, man, going to I, finding finding cutscenes on YouTube and then using the like YouTube to MP3 downloader thing, and then mm-hmm. getting that to convert into Ableton because for some reason the MP3s that you get from the YouTube to MP3 converter do not go into Ableton. They like read as like having no audio track, despite playing in itunes or whatever yeah it's 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 been a whole headache (laughs) glad he's doing that (laughs) i found out with logic it's like trying to stop copyright but it's like cool i'll just put it in a converter and put it right back you lose yeah yeah (laughs) so that's just fun as fuck um is there anything that we could talk about about the concept of the album mainly like behind the name of it or where you guys kind of went with the writing of it because again like how you said there's kind of like a conceptual to it um yeah we can we can talk about that what do you want to know 
I guess we, we should probably we should probably start with the album name. It's called, it's mm-hmm. called Post Deuce. Yeah, P- so God, that's another thing. In it's retro- not called Post Deuce. It's not called Post Deuce. I, I hope people, I've heard like more than one person pronounce it that way. I'm just like, fuck. Is, is it really Deus? It's Deus, which Deus. is Latin for God. Deus, okay. Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's Latin for after God. And like, mm-hmm. that's the tagline that we use on our merch and on all our promo shit. After God, there is peace. And it's a, uh, oh, yeah. Not a Christian band either. Not a Christian band. We've gotten that confusion too. Like, people, people hit us up and they're like, yeah, man, after you find God, there's peace. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, after God, like, after him, when he's, <laughs> when he's over. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's like the broad concept um it wasn't really the starting point either which is kind of interesting i guess mm-hmm. like the first the first couple songs on the record um were written in like 2016 and <clears throat> those ones and, and some others i guess most of them really like they're they dive into like some socio-political things that i think are important and then mm-hmm um but everything on the record like ties back to christianity and its influence on people and its past influence on me um mostly negative now being where i am now um as an atheist i guess and uh but yeah everything kind of routes back to that so that's that's kind of the overarching thing but there's like a devolution on the album from like like a socio-political nature into like a really really personal nature and my relationship with some of those concepts so Hmm. yeah that's that's kind of the starting point and like something that i've always appreciated with bands is where they kind of have something to say rather than just the stupid like rah 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 just (laughs) here's a lyric you know it's like I want fucking meaning behind my lyrics. I want something behind the song just because I want to take something from it. So, I mean, that shit, it's everything to me, honestly, because like I, uh, I, I, I feel like for better or for worse, like it feels weird being 30 and still believing this, but like music has shaped my perspective and my outlook on life from the moment that I decided I liked it, you know, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So and like it still continues to do that and i've learned lots of things about <laughs> life um from music so i i aim to do the same thing and you know obviously i write for myself too there's like a form of catharsis in there but that catharsis is like part of it is like sharing what i've learned i guess mm-hmm. did you yeah did you write all the lyrics or was it kind of like an open book to everyone in the band to like, uh, I wrote, I wrote all the lyrics. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, did that go before the music or did, did you just have all the music and then the lyrics just Shinfo? Uh, for the most part, Mm -hmm. the music was done prior to the lyrics, but like some of my lyric writing is like, um i have like poems or journals or just random shit that i think of that i write down like it can just be like a sentence and i'll have a song and i'll decide okay this song sounds like it's about this and then i'll like open up my journal and find like something that i wrote down whether it be like a whole set of poetry or just like a couple words and then i'll take that and like turn it into the whole song and Mm -hmm. just run with it so some of it most most of it really came like that interesting that's very cool um i really fuck with that shit um again back to the whole like just having meaning behind your words and uh just really shows your dedication to wanting the music to be good because it's like people can bullshit shit but it's like if you have a real word behind it boom that didn't make any sense but. No, <laughs> dude, dude, I get it. Like that's, like I said, that's that all, all my, all the bands that I would call my favorite bands are bands that have like affected me lyrically, just yeah. just as well, just as well as musically, if not more so. Fuck yeah, um, David, 
what other bands other than Monster Watch are you in? Because I know you got a few. Uh, only the band I play is Sea Salt currently. Okay. Uh, they, we got a new song dropping June. Uh, stall while I look it up. I should know this. <laughs> June 24th. Oh, yeah. New Sea Salt track called Trick Myself. I did not play drums on it. It's all programmed. <laughs> Wait, that's not the. No, we did a we did another project with um, Topo Chico. Thanks to our friend Dan Matson from the home team. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that I'm not sure when it's coming out. I want to say sometime vaguely summer, but uh, that's like a that's like a like Topo Chico is doing like a vinyl compilation thing. Oh. So we did another song for that. Um, and that one's really cool too. I'm excited for it. That song fucking slaps. I haven't heard the one that's dropping on the 24th. It's it's good too. <laughs> I, be- I believe that. <laughs> Shout out Tapa Chico. That is my <laughs> choice. Sorry, David. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out Dan. Shout out the home team. How are you? Also nice bunch of boys. Mm-hmm. I was actually just talking to Ryan on uh, Instagram and they're doing a music video right now. And like their production is just insane. And like, yeah, dude, I saw John wearing some like chain mail, something or other. I don't even Yeah, <laughs> I... the bird cage. It's, it, it looks like a whole thing. Yeah. It's a movie every time from them. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um, so is there any other points to that album? Because I see we did some singles and all of those singles were to the album. Same with the videos. Who did those videos or was it all DIY? Like those are just... all the boy King Zab. Ooh, okay. Um, I have known Nathaniel, right? I, professionally, he goes by the King Zab, the triple six champion himself. He's got a he's got a belt and everything. Um, yeah, I've I've known Zab for coming up on ten years. Uh, I played in numerous bands with him over the last, I guess, nine years. Um, he's in Scythe Gang Triple Six. He does all their video work, and he also does video work for a whole bunch of rappers. He moved to LA a few months ago. They're they're doing great, but uh, yeah, he manned the camera and did all the editing for. For every video we've got right now fuck yeah and honestly there he's does phenomenal work if you need videos and you're in la go to king's app <laughs> okay. um la did wait so i'm sorry i missed a part did you guys go to you didn't go to la you brought him up for that oh no he no, used, he used to live up here oh okay cool got you he moved yeah. uh like last july or something Oh, okay, cool. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So Zoom's got this weird thing where it's like you have to upgrade your account to go past 40 fucking minutes. I've never done that before. So, um... (laughs) What? I didn't even know that. Oh, we're running out of time. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, would you want to give some top fives real quick? Garrett first. Oh, sure. All right. Uh, prepared. I am prepared. <laughs> um, my top five are AFI, mm. Poison the Well, Have Heart. Mm, hold on, I made a list. Sorry. AFI, Poison the Well, Have Heart, Glass Jaw, and Hate Breed. Damn, bro, do you need a hug? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Always, I always need a hug. Fuck yeah, dude. Let's go. Let's go deep on AFI real quick. Uh, okay. <laughs> I love that band front to back. They're the um, greatest band ever exist. But this is what makes it fun. Give me what you would consider their worst album versus what you call their best album. Their worst album is undoubtedly their most recent album, Bodies. <laughs> um, yeah. It's. Uh, I don't, I don't it, it's such a weird feeling because I've been listening to them for so fucking long but I put on that record I listened to it front to back once and I was like huh 
and, th and then I was done. I don't think I've listened to it since. So that that was the first time that that had ever happened. So uh, just based on that alone, I'm going to say it's their worst album. Uh, their best album, though, is Sing the Sorrow. Like, that's a hot take to some people because it's like their, their sellout record or whatever. But like, mm -hmm. I think it was their fucking magnum opus. Like, they put everything from their past together and like, like it, it was just it's great and that record also came out like formative years for me i think it came out when i was like 12 afi was my first show when they were touring on sing the sorrow so i just got a lot of love for that record that's sick i and what's funny is crash love had that same like when it first came out i was like Meh, and i just didn't listen to it and then a few years later like i i love that album now and uh, <laughs> it just like it took me like a year or two to be like oh that's what they were fucking doing they just don't want to do punk shit no more cool dude crash love honestly like if bodies hadn't come out crash love would have been my answer on the worst record and i would agree like, with you yeah <laughs> i i still don't fuck with it that much like i listen to december underground all the time i listen to mm -hmm. burials and the blood album all the fucking time but i never really listen to crash love but fuck yeah it's got a couple cool tracks mm -hmm. so I like the mix on everything, so it just sounds like a just a big album. So I just like the yeah. of it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Plus, Davey took like a different type with his singing, just still that high pitched singing, but I loved it. It was fun. Um, yeah, I will go December Underground as my top tier, just because uh, that was the first album I was given to by them. So again, it was just kind of like front to back all the time. Found Sing the Sorrow. Yeah. I had their DVD that they came out with. Where they it it was the December Underground DVD with the album, so hell yeah, they did some cool shit on MySpace with like making bands and all that stuff. Cool or not bands like a uh, whole like group Discord before Discord was a thing. Oh, oh yeah yeah so. yeah yeah dude that shit was awesome. Fuck yeah! All right, David. Huh. Okay, so I think I settled on BC Boys as my all time. <laughs> uh, okay, and then probably No Means No. Um, I'm going to be a corny ass child of the late 2000s and say Lamb of Motherfucking God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then. Redneck Nation. <laughs> uh and then i guess queens of the stone age is probably pretty up there uh i don't know if we can put solo artists or not <laughs> can yes. that count as a band so i think anderson pack is uh that would round out anderson pack would round out my top five i really like <laughs> anderson pack yeah the, the silk sonic yeah, dude, that song yeah. Sonic Record was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Okay. So the band I want to dive deep into with you is Queens of the Stone Age. Give me the top and the bottom for you. Okay. I I I got a hot take for top, I think. I'm gonna say rated R is not number one. I mean sick album cover to itself. Very close to Songs for the Deaf. Mm -hmm. They're like I don't know, some of the songs on rated R just edged out just like just very slightly did dave also yeah grohl, the, the, was david grohl on that one dave grohl played on songs for the deaf yeah but not radar. got you different yeah, different radar, radar. Mm -hmm. uh but i think the drums on radar slap that's actually might be why it edges it out for me not that i mean dave grohl's performance on songs for the deaf is fucking phenomenal as well mm -hmm. uh shit maybe maybe songs for the deaf is the best one Maybe I'm just trying to be contrarian by saying rated R. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, for the worst one, honestly, their first record might be my least favorite. Um, I don't even remember what it's called. I have to look it up right now. I think it was just their self-titled. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's self-titled. Yeah. Uh, uh, or, I, honestly, not a big fan of uh, Era Vulgaris. Mm -hmm. Um like I, threes and sevens i think it's like kind of annoying low-key uh a lot of the rest of it's a little forgettable to me i'm just but... such a nerd for josh Hame. like 
everything he does i'm like oof i like it <laughs> yeah yeah love like clockwork that was like major change of pace but very very cool stuff sawyer our guitar player has like the like ultra deluxe like clockwork edition with like the comic book that goes with it and everything i don't know if you've seen that but no Sawyer loves queens of storage also um and yeah people really didn't like villains their most recent one but like mm -hmm. i don't know i thought it was fun it's definitely it's not like a it's not a top three but it's good mm -hmm. i would take like I would take Era Volgus as my top, and I know that's probably gonna make you mad. Really? Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. I, I, uh, <laughs> there are just some songs on that that just sound sick as fuck. Where I'm like, yep, this is my top. But um, also, song for the deaf, just because I think that that was their peak lineup of members, just musically. Yeah, with 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 Nick and Josh and um, R.I.P. Mark Lanigan contributing a whole bunch on that, and Dave playing drums. Yeah, dude, that record slaps. Okay, okay, so for the Death is the best. <laughs> I'll, I'll concede. Oh, yeah. Rated R, close number two. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, okay, so every time I do Zoom, there's always something else that pops up, and this is really fucking annoying, so I need to figure out this whole fucking upgrading to get more time, which I think is fucking stupid. Yeah, oh, Discord. 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 How the okay? How do I do that? I got a Discord account. Oh, you can do you can you can do video chats like this on there. Okay. Well, pause or or you want to wrap up? I don't we, care. We we can hop on Discord. I'm down okay. with that. If so you we're want gonna, more, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then come back onto Discord. <laughs> okay. Cool. Sick. And then in case this doesn't end, but yeah, I'll just stop the recording there for the actual podcast part. But, um, okay. Let me log into discord and then, okay. Yeah. I will do the same. I'll message you my, uh, credential shit on, uh, Instagram. Okay. Commercial break time from your fucking local bad bitch. I know you're already tired of hearing in my voice, but it don't matter. Cause I gotta tell you about shit. Okay, so uh, in these drawers, you hear me opening them. We got a website with our band's merch on it. GMO, Constanza, you know what I mean? And we got grinders on there. And then we had a tour just not too long ago. Uh, first week of May, was it? Yeah, first week of May. May 5th was our first show that got shut down by cops. Fuck the pigs, dog. And, uh, so yeah, we got a few shirts left, uh, literally, like, about one to two of each size. Not very many larges left. But, if you go hit that shit up, you know, it's gonna come with extra shit that I've made and brought on the tour, i.e., like, posters and shit. So, yeah, be quick, hammy. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't want to talk too much about the GMO album, but basically everything's done, done. We're mixing, so that should just be the rest of this month. Oh shit, there's only like three or four days left of this month, so it should be like the next like three weeks, like halfway through June. Um, yeah, I don't know, just that's mainly mixing. I'm not talking about other shit, so don't get your hopes up or your fucking panties in a notch. Okay, I gotta get back to the episode because dumbass Christian doesn't know how to work fucking like Zoom or be professional, so I had an issue, so. That's why I had to do this now, because it just makes it, like, uh, fucking admin. Okay, good night. I'll tell you what the fuck, man. Fuck oh, yeah. God. Part two. Part two. Part, part two. Damn. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's the name of one of our songs. Fuck yeah. Um, okay, so... We got to end. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Attack, attack. We back again, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was thinking about changing it, but then I didn't have enough time. I could have put, like, broadside on there or some shit and really got y'all <laughs> mad. <laughs> but, um, okay, Dude, so I, I appreciate it, your patience. It's loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, we're here for it. Hell yeah. So we ended on the top five. I mainly wanted to squeeze that in just in case we didn't go any further. But um, yeah, Songs of the Deaf.
possibly best album ever no but yes um where do y'all stand with locals who are your top three local bands in seattle <laughs> oh said, shit monster rc song lewis <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, yeah. shameless self-promotion right there. You gotta pull it. <laughs> like, top top five like current local bands? Is that what you're asking? It's hard to That's say. Kind of... It's hard to say current because then you could just name all the bands and just kind of tier list it from there. <laughs> but I mean, I would say in general. I mean, because there there's like some big fucking bands from Seattle that I love. I well, guess so. I'm I'm repping Dream Decay currently. Mm-hmm. Although I think they're I don't I don't know if they're done. They're doing some weird like other project right now where like they're acting as one of their own members. Like it was it's like that thing we were talking about earlier with like Code Orange doing adventures. They're mm-hmm. doing like one of their members like solo music right now. I think that's sick. It's kind of hard to tell. They're kind of like very uh enigmatic on the internet mm-hmm. um but i've seen them a few times and they fucking rip that's Love that band. Hell yeah. uh, kaizo we love kaizo we love kaizo <laughs> <laughs> we we really do we love is luna we love is luna nice boys uh um, we love pine box yes pine box nice boys pine box rips um Dude, I really fuck with all the new Avoid stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, a, a little less Garrett's speed, but that is less my speed, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like all their stuff. Um, Hostage at a beach party. That song fucking rips. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, that song's great. The Electric Boogaloo song is sick. Zab did the video for that also. Okay. Hell Speaking yeah. of Zab joints. Um, yeah, Nick's a Nick's a sweetheart. Their guitar player, mm. I like that guy a lot. Um, but yeah, those dudes are good. Uh, okay, I found my top three locals right now. Okay, okay. Uh, Wake of Humanity, they're the homies. Um, that they're they're a fucking metalcore band. So I love metalcore, and uh, they're sick. We just played with a band called City of Industry um and they're they're like a power violence band but they got some they got some scrams vibes behind them that i'm really into that's that's big right up my alley and then um i'm gonna go with a portland band and pick uh blue blaze because i think what they're doing is sick and yeah they're really rad gotta love Uh, a band with two singers brb now it's just me all right um Okay, what? Well, okay, okay. Other locals. Holy shit! I was going to well, talk drums okay. since we had a second. Oh, dude, real, real quick. I gotta say, mm-hmm. Rat King is fire. Uh, I had never heard of them until like a month ago, but mm-hmm. they, like, dude, my my friend from Arizona, like, he's he's from here originally, but he moved to Arizona or he moved to Boston and then Arizona, like a long time ago. So he's like not in the local scene up here. Mm-hmm. he hit me up and was like yo check out this rat king band and i we didn't even realize they were from seattle and then i like found out they're from here and they're just like local boys but that band rips oh um so check them out otherwise shout out peyote ugly shout out smoker dad um shout out black ends is really cool uh nicole from black ends also has another band she, oh they're they're in they're in uh rainbow coalition death cult oh okay fuck yeah um that band was sick yeah i'm trying to think i'm gonna i want to get in trouble not naming homie bands i apologize if we're homies and i forgot your band but okay drums (laughs) how long have you been playing oh damn dude like 16 17 years jesus christ technically i just turned 30 Mm -hmm. uh so shit i guess like 18 years god them hands oh, are weathered <laughs> <laughs> i took the good chair oh yeah damn um gary plays drums too i do hey, you play, drums play for like as long as i have you play fucking everything don't you because i see you play guitar too 
yeah drum, drums are my first instrument i started playing drums when i was like 12 um mm-hmm. there you go gareth's played drums longer than me <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I, yeah i'm i'm not good at it i was never really great i got to like uh I got to pretty good and then stopped and now I'm just bad. So. Dude, no, Garrett's a fine drummer. <laughs> he plays my kit in the garage from time to time and every time mm. I'm like, oh man, he's like doing it. <laughs> it's like a bike. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of it is like I miss like see and that's the thing is like if I sit down to play drums, I like throw on some headphones and play songs that I've known how to play, you know, f- mm. for years at this point. And I'm like, so I'm not like doing anything that's actually going to make me better, you know, <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll be honest from like a dr- drums got boring to me, I guess, when I started like really zeroing in on like wanting to, <laughs> to write music. So Boo. I, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Notes <are> for losers. <laughs> <laughs> but like there, it's still really cool. Like it really helps me in the writing process that I can play drums because like when I'm sitting down with a guitar. And I'm like coming up with something like drums are what I use for like transitional pieces and songs like in order to choose the next part I got to figure out like you know do, do the drums feel like they got to go into halftime here or double time or like what's the move and the drums are usually the deciding factor in that for me so like when I'm writing my my best writing situation is to be sitting down in a room with guitar and drums so I can run back and forth and back and forth and build the whole thing up in my head that's fucking cool oh yeah yeah um but yeah i write shitty drum parts and david makes them better so if you if you heard like some of the original demos for post AS, they just have like midi map drums of the drums that i like programmed and set up mm-hmm. and like yeah he just he made everything a thousand times more interesting so it's david's really he's got a bunch of good ideas mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got good instincts <laughs> And, like, David, I don't know how you feel about this, but, like, I kind of prefer just being given, like, even if it's just, like, just really shitty MIDI drummed or whatever, but it's, like, I would rather just be given something so I can, like, listen to it, play it a few times by myself, than just being, like, all right, do something with this riff. And it's, like, dude, I I like getting skeletons. They're nice Mm -hmm. to have. I feel like if you have, like like, a primary creator, then, like, it's good to know what the intent is somewhere Mm -hmm. at least um which i yeah garrett's garrett garrett's the primary writing figure for everything you hear on post days um so yeah it was good to have skeletons in place we i mean we ripped some stuff pretty pretty far away from what it was originally supposed to be like first demo in in some instances but like most of the most of the skeletal stuff is intact mm-hmm. from from what Garrett did. That's cool. Uh, y'all got a top drum company. Is there like a beef or who's got like what's the top drum company you would say shells wise? Mm. I I don't know enough to even comment. Like, <laughs> do you have really fallen in love with Ludwig lately? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know why. <laughs> uh yeah they may i mean like every i guess every ludwig snare i've played is like special to some degree mm-hmm. all the like nicer like made in america ones at least um i mean the black beauty is like the the legendary recording standard yeah um and i have like a i have like a 67 ludwig club date down in the garage um that i bought on reverb a couple years ago and I love that thing. It's very, it's like fragile. Like I never want to like do anything with it because uh, it's potentially worth a lot of money and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make hardware the same back then. So mm-hmm. I'm not trying to throw it in a van or anything like that, but um, yeah, there's, there's something special about those old three ply, but thick um, shells they were doing in the sixties with like the map, the, what is it? I think it's maple poplar maple. So it's like sandwiched maple mm-hmm. on the outside and inside, poplar in the middle. It but it was like better poplar board. back then too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um fuck yeah. I like Lugwigs. I don't really care for like the newer brand shit, like because I feel like if I'm gonna get one, I'm gonna just get like a vintage kit. If I was to like have mm. my choice, you know what I mean? Like mm. cool. Yeah, dude, now I'm really on the hunt for 
like a early 80s tama superstar that's Ooh. like my dream get right now mm-hmm. uh partially because they're kind of the same as yamaha recording customs which are like absurdly expensive and the the early 80s superstars are like basically a cheap way to get one of those they have like same shell composition essentially um you know similar hardware loadouts and everything they don't have the lugs that run all the way down the shell which i actually prefer anyway but uh yeah i really want one of those i let one get away from me on offer up a couple months back and i've been super mad about it ever since and there's a couple of the same loadout on reverb and i'm just like dying to get a hold of one but nobody wants to ship 24 inch kick drums and 18 inch four toms <laughs> that's what i was thinking was it like a power tom setup where it's like 14 by 14 13 by 13 <laughs> uh surprisingly no surprisingly these are just like i mean they are huge it's like a it's like a 24 by 14 kick and then like 13 by 8 14 by 9 rack toms and a 18 by 16 floor tom mm-hmm. so they're not super deep but they are like enormous they're yeah just, they're just big old circles honestly that's the shells shell size i prefer just 13 16 18 i mean the mm. one you said was 14 but you know i mean bigger the better yeah. boys yeah dude i for some i i like two rack toms i never i never use it currently because it's a pain in the ass to set up mm-hmm. but uh just two two big ass rack toms that's like that's a power move to me he recorded <laughs> he recorded post deus with two rack toms and like i love listening to the record and like i was so involved with the recording process and like the the way the drums those three toms were like panned and set up it's like there's there's like that spot in indoctrinate where he does like the fucking classic just roll down with like a big fucking swell through it and like <laughs> goddamn between like david's playing and asa's mixing on those toms and like the way they're panned down it just sounds so fucking perfect that's yeah that's a big stupid lars ulrich fill for sure it's so sick <laughs> hell yeah um that's the thing is like i have at my practice space right now i have three rack toms and two floor toms just for fun and i feel mm. like i would be such a diva at shows having to like adjust it every other song because shit's fucking <laughs> weird like yeah i'm just doing my two toms i'm good <laughs> oh yeah dude now when when we did uh scythe fest i because i used to play drums for scythe gang triple six um yeah i i i busted out two racks two floors for that oh there's no drama oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're nice folks they just wanted to move to california and i didn't I, um i just wanted to make a joke but yeah I, I i busted out the whole two racks two floors like two crashes a stack china hats like whole nine yards and it was such a bitch yeah and also like i had like multiple flubbed fills because like i didn't get the angles quite just right mm-hmm. so like because it's you know it's all core zone so i didn't have infinite setup time or whatever and like i don't know yeah i'll live i'll stick to i'll stick to 12 16 <laughs> yeah forever it's just so much easier to deal with yeah so now that we're uh, not boring Garrett anymore with drums, Garrett, do you have any guitar preferences, or are you just like a slapper? <laughs> do I have any guitar preferences? Can I, can I just show you? <laughs> oh. So, I like Telecasters. Mm-hmm. There's one. Beauty. There's another. Oh, that one's a baritone. Um, this is my new. Lilith Beast, also a Telecaster with an Evertune drop B. And then, believe it or not, I actually have another Telecaster in a bag that's yep. the same as this without a pit guard, and it's got gold hardware and a normal mm-hmm. bridge. So it's and safe then, to say uh, you have a type. Yeah, <laughs> but give me a black Telecaster. I'm a happy boy. Um, I also, uh, I guess maybe I should have mentioned this when we were talking about our name, but uh, part of our name comes from an anime called the uh, neon genesis evangelion it's the greatest tv show ever made david's got a tattoo commemorating <laughs> its amazingness and uh <laughs> um i personally believe the highest forms of art in this world are metalcore and anime and 
<laughs> at one point fender uh made a neon genesis evangelion special edition telecaster that i bought from i had to have like a fucking uh like a personal shopper in japan like buy mm-hmm. it for me and ship it overseas and had to pay for it to go through customs and shit oh my god uh, but yeah anyway it's have like to have it's it, made I, yeah i had to have it that's like my fucking crown jewel telecaster um so but yeah that uh that show is like a big influence because like on its face it looks like a big monsters you know robots fight monster show but it's like an introspection about how different people deal with depression and shit it's really good so. oh yeah do you want me to yeah. show you my guitar collection real quick hell yeah i have it i have one i'll show you real quick all right i'm ready i hope it's a fucking telecaster oh i wish <laughs> <laughs> So this is it. Oh, Hell yeah. The oh. With the squire, trying to get the fucking green screen to work with it. How's it? It's a squire. But oh, I, squire. Saw that. I saw that Monster <laughs> Energy logo. I'm trying out for a Limp Biscuit band, bro. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Um, my dad's Dad in- vibes and break stuff and whatever. Literally. Um, <laughs> my dad's a truck driver and he does like moves and shit for people. And he texted me one day. He was like, hey, this dude's getting rid of this guitar. Do you want it? I don't play guitar. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll fucking, I'll take that guitar. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, uh, I mean, eventually it'll be there for a Constanza show for Darren to smash. So. Nice. Be sick as fuck. Dude, Damn, you're going to smash that beauty. Constanza is sick, by the way. Thank Dude, you. I was so pleasant. Mm-hmm. I was so fucking happy when you guys ended up opening that, uh, that Seattle show, I didn't. Oh. I honestly didn't even know you were in a fucking band. And then <laughs> Alex, Alex was like, "Oh, Christian's band is gonna open." I'm like, "What? Oh, sick!" And then yeah, you guys played and like, yeah, you guys like do a thing that's like really, really, um, just it's reminiscent of like a style of music that I really, really fucking like. Like I really like early 2000s screamo, and you guys have that vibe in it. So oh yeah, well, I love that shit. I appreciate that, and like you know it's funny because like i'm starting to get close with like all these bands and stuff and like i just moved here from california in 2017 darren came from the philippines like right before 2017 probably like towards the end of 2016 (coughs) so it's like getting into the scene was uh kind of hard i think i even met you at an elko show garrett like i because i remember talking Mm -hmm. to you about your tattoo the circle jerks one specifically because Oh shit! Yeah, it was like when I first. Wait, was wait. He's trying to get it covered up. <laughs> do, do, yeah, the, the tattoo I want covered up. <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't. Do you know what show? I don't remember. It was either eighteen or two thousand eighteen or nineteen, and I was at Elko, and I just remember seeing it being like sick fucking tattoo, <laughs> and then just <laughs> me being me, I just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's probably that Sea Space Cow. Were you at Sea Space Cowboy and Knock Loose? No, Indiana. I didn't go to that one. It was one of the shows I went to right before the pandemic. But mm. I don't... okay. what sucks about that, too, is like I haven't really been to too many venues out here because all the shows are at Elko or like the Soto. So since yeah. I moved out here, I haven't really been to too many venues. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, like a lot. I mean, a lot of the shit that's my flavor ends up at El Corazon. I feel like 90 percent of the shows I go to are there. So unfortunately um you know i am excited about the croc having a small room downstairs now mm -hmm. yeah it's tight yeah the croc's old space was pretty small but it was like it was awkwardly shaped and it wasn't small enough so like with their new spot they have a bigger room than their old room and they have a smaller room than their old room so Hmm. i'm excited to see that Mm -hmm. once once something's there that I want to catch, <laughs> um, the last show I went to at the Croc was like pre-pandemic at their old building. I went to see Thursday. So. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, there's a venue in California called the Observatory in Santa Ana, and they had that room like, there. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, oh that is like my <laughs> all-time favorite venue, like yeah. um, it by far. But they had the Constellation <laughs> Room and then the big room, and like I saw Dude. GBH conflict every year and then like i would see the local bands in the small room and it's just so cool yeah. when places do that 
sick dude the first time i went to that venue this is such a bullshit story i was in i was in anaheim for work and this like folk pop artist that i like named zella day was playing at the observatory Mm -hmm. so i was i was staying in orange so i was like okay fuck it i'm gonna drive over to santa Ana and try to catch this show i drove over there and paid 40 dollars to fucking park and waited in a line for an hour mm-hmm. and by the time i got up to the box office they were like nah we're sold out I'm like you gotta be fucking kidding me yeah, yeah. the observatory kind of sucks in that <laughs> in that aspect but like the sound is like the best sound ever there like if i would say out of every venue that has the best sound i don't know why yeah. no matter where you stand stand you don't come out with like ringing ears you hear everything and i don't know that's important for a live show for me being able to hear shit you know what i mean yeah mm. i feel that um have any of you guys played the it's a really big venue but the spanish ballroom or been to no. a show there i've only i've only ever seen videos of that place my friend aaron does sound there sometimes i worked the drowning pool gig there and like i was so <laughs> unimpressed with the sound like I heard the fucking bass player so goddamn good. I heard the kick drum really good. Didn't hear the guitar for, like, any of the bands. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing. And, like, the venue just had so much sub to it. Um, <laughs> and they had, like, touring sound people, too. So I don't know if it was just whatever that was doing. Because I – it wasn't hearing. What's funny, too, is Constanza actually recorded our first songs at Decade Sound with him. Oh, first, sick. Our first four ones. So Wait, with Aaron? Mm-hmm. oh okay yeah and like funny story i don't know if i've talked about it on the podcast before but um when we were we were originally called nevea because we we're super edgy emo kids spelling our shit heaven backwards um and we were record- oh! oh yeah so well <laughs> hold on there was a band from tacoma <laughs> that was called nevea and i was gonna say you must have been because that was further back. That was like pre-2017. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we're at the studio doing our songs, all that shit. And he kept being like, y'all have really like changed it around. Super cool. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> kept making like little references and shit. And I was like, dude, I, we've never been here. I've never recorded here before. And I went on Bandcamp and of course, based in Tacoma, recorded their first EP with him. All that bullshit. Oh, was so, Ray Budworth in that band? I think something? so. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's hella funny. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Then we changed our name. Yeah, dude. You. Pro- yeah, you probably had it. You probably had Aaron all fucking confused, dude. So like, Aaron, Aaron for me, Aaron's kind of like a fixture in the local music scene because, like, when I started going to a bunch of local shows, um, uh, there was a lot of really fucking cool active hardcore bands and metalcore bands like down in Tacoma and um yeah that was that was back when like Rainfest was happening and all that kind of shit and like every fucking hardcore band from Tacoma like Aaron recorded in his basement every single fucking one of them that's cool and so yeah my my old band did a did a seven inch with him um and yeah he he became a really good friend of mine so he he's like a staple to me I really like that dude mm-hmm What's funny is so. during our session, without saying anything, he just looked at his phone like this and then walked away. And then he left for 45 minutes and went and did sound at Real Art, which we didn't know he did. <laughs> and then he came back and we we're like, okay, cool. Let's finish guitars, I guess. <laughs> Dude, he he's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like not surprised by that at all. <laughs> but he's, he's always trying to keep himself busy. Mm-hmm. That's fucking awesome. Is there uh, any new merch or anything, videos or anything new that Lilith will be working on in the future? There's new, there's, there's new, new merch. merch. Oh boy! Fuck yeah! Yeah. Um, we're we're going to tell you about it later, but mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to say anything about it yet. Okay, got you. Yeah. So but we got to tell you about it because you know, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um. Yeah. So other than that um so basically y'all's promotion for videos is done because i just also like the video so i was wondering if there would be any more dude i kind like i kind of want to do more because like 
I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of like indifferent to it right now. Like all I really give a shit about right now is playing shows. Mm-hmm. And like that that's that's where my head's at. But like this record, I don't think got its due, unfortunately. Like the videos we did for like I really like them. I really like them all. Mm-hmm. And I think there's other songs on the record that are really good and like I don't know if it didn't if it didn't cost money, you know, I would do a video for every single fucking song on the record. But for real that's because yeah I, I like them all that much but i don't know I, w- I would like to do a couple more we had like a grandiose concept for one of them that we just didn't feel like we had the means to get done mm-hmm. um and i don't know i think we should revisit that idea but yeah we'll see we'll see i may have i may have evolved past it <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy how much you could do with a GoPro, though. And, like, you know, I mean, editing is a motherfucker, especially for videos. But, I mean, mm-hmm. like, it's crazy how many bands are just putting out their own videos. I, I Obviously, um, you guys went to Zach. That was his name for it. Zab. 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 Z-A-B-B. Z-A-B-B. Yeah. But Zab for it. But, um, I mean, the possibilities are endless. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I will say that, like, Yeah, I don't know. Videos are weird to me because, mm-hmm. like, I don't ever really sit down and watch music videos. So when I'm like, I don't know, when we were like coming up with the ideas for these videos and stuff, it was like, it was just really hard. Like, I don't really have the brain for that personally either. Mm-hmm. So, like, had to de- defer a lot of the creativity there, I guess. And, like, some of it, like, some of the stuff that I did come up with, I'm just, like, it's not really that creative. Like, it, I don't know. Yeah, I just don't have that, I don't have that, like, visual eye or whatever. So, yeah, I, I, I lean on other people for that. So, it's kind of out of my hands in that way. Mm-hmm. And, like, going back to the whole home team thing, like, bands like that who make their music videos like a movie where it's, like, because everyone has a live video, everyone has like the lyric video where it's like no one's really gonna watch that that's just for like whatever just putting out the song but it's like putting that fucking idea out there of a movie in just like three four minute span and just kind of getting it done i think that is what keeps people watching it you know what i mean Mm. i love a movie so like shameless promotion but when we did the music video for our EP, um, we just did it as one straight, as like a robbery into the death. And then Marbles was like the prelude mm. to it. So I just kind of... Okay. We just filmed all of it in like two days with like a GoPro, and we had like my homie holding it, and then we just... And then once I got done, I was like, holy shit, I have so much footage, I can just do another video. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Yeah, but... um movies are fun any top movies for you guys are you horror or comedy oh garrett's a dude <laughs> cinemaphile I, AF. I fucking love movies <laughs> like it's 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 not even funny mm-hmm. um me, yeah me and my partner go to the movie theater like probably once a week at least <laughs> mm-hmm. so but um i i really like small like indie dramas that's like my big vibe mm-hmm. but i'm also i'm also a big horror movie fan like horror movies were like my first love but um yeah i don't know my favorite movie of all time is an indie movie called manchester by the sea mm-hmm. it's pretty good it's just really sad i like movies where you just like watch humans live their seemingly like normal lives and there's nothing really fantastical or it's just like a normal person like going through something yeah so that's my favorite kind of movie um are you gonna watch the new one with ethan hawk the black phone dude yeah i actually so i saw a trailer for that the other day and um i showed i saw i saw the trailer for it like last week while i was out of town and then i showed my partner the trailer like just the other night and her and I are both really excited for that because we think like there was a period like before um I guess kind of before Hereditary came out and like after the J-horror craze of like the early 2000s 
like that midpoint right there between i don't know i guess like 2006 or whatever and like 2015 really fucking sucked a lot for horror movies i think mm-hmm. and then like one of the gems that was in that time frame was sinister and the black phone is the same writer director and he got ethan hawk back to ethan hawk was a star in sinister yeah so i'm really excited to see what that team comes up with again i think that'll be like i think that'll be a good like traditional horror movie mm-hmm. um for the modern world because the last like five years in horror movies has been really really focused on um like this indie vibe like um gotcha marketing horror movies that Mm -hmm. uh and people are calling it elevated horror i don't want to call it that but like movies like the witch and get out and us and um why can't i fucking think of anything else um Uh, it comes at night mm -hmm. it follows the paranormal activities midsummer. yeah mid- midsummer uh no the, the no. previous uh the previous ari aster one um hereditary hereditary yeah like, people are really focused on those horror movies <laughs> probably i mean with good reason because they're really good but it's kind of like ushered out the time of like just some like good fucking popcorn fuel horror movies and that I- that movement feels played out to me at this point yeah it was really cool until like 2020 and now it's petering yeah to me yeah and i I think i think this ethan hawk movie that he's talking about the the black phone i think that's gonna like usher us back into an era of like more traditional horror movies for the foreseeable future Mm -hmm. what did you think think of the lovely bones from stephen king i think that was who did it because it seems I like it, I don't think that's a Stephen King story. That's yeah. not a Stephen King story. But that was like a YA adaptation, right? Yeah, because it was yeah. a book, right? Yeah, because that's just what seems like the Black Phone is. It's just a horror movie of lovely, like Lonely Bones or whatever. Oh, okay. I see, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dude, the, the Lovely Bones is fucking weird though. That that book has like some weird fucking like. um proselytizing like shit going on behind it definitely yeah like it's very it's very christian (laughs) Mm -hmm. god squad gotta love it yeah (laughs) oh yeah well um so let's uh wrap the podcast up then we could start another stream real quick and just kind of finish up the details and stuff i keep fucking doing this i don't know why but um (laughs) <laughs> anything y'all <laughs> anything y'all want to plug real quick at fans fans i forgot self-deprecator <laughs> uh very sick costanza very <laughs> sick um spur very sick played with them euphoria those are man those kids are like have 16 like, aren't they <laughs> yeah they're, they're babies they're fucking killing it mm-hmm. and i've never seen somebody like get so much better so quickly or i have but like yeah they're a bunch of like 18 year olds so that's why they're able to like like i see them at one show and i'm like all right yeah they're a bunch of kids and i see them at the next show and i'm like what the fuck yeah <laughs> grew like two years worth in like a month that's so sick uh anyways anybody else to shout out i don't even know spoon vendors from portland are tight help from portland is tight i'll uh, uh i'll plug self-deprecator again because like when i met them at the vfw first of all john the fucking drummer of that band is insane like mm-hmm. dude yeah. he's in a he's in a noise band called till the teeth mm-hmm that is like one of the fucking most interesting live experiences you'll ever see. If you get a chance to catch them, okay, go watch their show. They'll Definitely. play like when <laughs> when I saw them, they played like two songs, but each song was like fifteen minutes. And I love it. Like it's it's drums, and John plays like a sample. He plays a sample pad a bunch, okay, and then he plays his drums, and then they got a dude with a, a vibraphone through a bunch of fucking effects pedals and then the other guy plays guitar but he mostly just hits the guitar and does a bunch of cool mic tricks and just it it was wild it's very atmospheric that's fucking cool 
Filth is eternal is tight. Formerly fucked and bound, I think. Yeah. Um is me. That's some that's some crazy black metal shit. They're tight. Black right. metal in Washington. Torn. We already shouted out Torn. Dude, you're you live in Olympia. Fucking uh wolves in the wolves in the throne rooms from Olympia. <laughs> I yeah. know. Black metal band. <laughs> oh, okay. there's, there's a few like noise black metal bands too that you just hear in garages that never play shows too, and I'm like, oh, I hear them down the street all the time. <laughs> but um shout out Django from Spokane. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh yeah. Um so this has formerly been Lilith. Thank you guys so much. It's been fucking sick. Um sick. we have technical difficulties like we do on every podcast, but I'm professional. I'm good at it. <laughs> but um <Editing>. so, <laughs> right? It's the it's just fix it in post. That's all it is. Yeah. Oh. All right. So forehead kiss. There's that. And thanks. Yeah. So I will. Okay. So let me see. One on mouth kiss. Huh? So why not one on mouth kiss? Because um, uh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so 